Sergio Perez is under greater pressure than ever to recover from a terrible series of races if he wants to keep his Red Bull Formula 1 job. And with team boss Christian Horner admitting it is unsustainable for the Mexican to continue performing at his current level, time is ticking for the Mexican. Unless the Mexican improves his form, Red Bull is likely to replace him. But who is the best choice? Well, what if I tell you that there is someone testing with the RB20 this week? And this seems like it has been Red Bull's plan all along. Liam Lawson is driving his first test in Red Bull's 2024 Formula One car today, which has drawn analogies to Daniel's pivotal run last year amid the possibility of another mid-season driver change. He was called up to Red Bull's second team a year ago, replacing Nick de Vries following a good test with the 2023 Red Bull RB19. This time, Red Bull Racing might face a surprising change, as the underperforming Sergio Perez faces mounting pressure to maintain his position. While Perez has two races before the summer break to reverse his poor run of form, Lawson has a great opportunity to press his claim with this Red Bull adventure and another test at the end of the month in a 2022 car with RB. That makes this a potentially vital month for Red Bull and its drivers. But Lawson's testing will be very different from Ricciardo's a year ago. Lawson will get restricted running in the 2024 Red Bull on Thursday at Silverstone, as it is a promotional event, often referred to in F1 as a filming day. This is one of the few opportunities to test a modern F1 car during the year, aside from pre-season and post-season testing. Though such events are formally described as purely for marketing or promotional purposes, they are frequently utilized by teams to assess various aspects. Early in the year, for example, they are used to test the new cars. In this example, Red Bull describes it as an aero test for Lawson that has been planned for some time. Red Bull is downplaying the test on the record, and it is true that there is only so much that can be read into it. It is limited to only 200 kilometers of running and uses Pirelli's Academy tires, which are a different, less performance specification than what is utilized on race weekends. And, because the FIA and all competitor teams must be supplied with extensive information about the test ahead of time, observers from these parties are welcome to attend if they so want. Red Bull cannot break restrictions in order to make this a more significant test than the regulations permit. At Silverstone, the distance restriction translates to 34 laps of the Grand Prix circuit, or 67 laps of the less usable but occasionally utilized for filming days, international layout. Lawson's run will most likely be on the Grand Prix circuit, and 34 laps is around 1.5 times the number accomplished in a Friday practice session, based on this year's British Grand Prix weekend. That's not a lot of mileage, but with an appropriate plan and a good sense of the offset between the Academy tires and the compounds used last weekend, Red Bull should be able to estimate Lawson's performance. Perhaps more importantly, it can assess how he handles the situation firsthand in the senior team, adding to its existing up-close data on Lawson from his five race weekends with RB last year, standing in for an injured Ricciardo, FP1 outings with both Red Bull teams in 2023, and single days of testing with each in 2022, Red Bull, and 2021, RB, then Alpha Tauri as well. This is not the same as Daniel's test last year, when Red Bull used a different portion of the regulations to test current cars, by employing him for a Pirelli tire test. The rules enable the FIA and Pirelli to conduct testing on existing and development compounds. This is more useful for driver evaluations than for the team itself because the car can only use components and software used in a test or race weekend that season or the previous year, and no test parts or component changes that provide any sort of information to the team unrelated to the tyre test are permitted. That made Ricardo's test more about Pirelli while also giving him the opportunity to drive the 2023 Red Bull, allowing the team to evaluate him up close though it is clear from Red Bull's comments at the time that it was at least aware when Ricardo was conducting qualifying simulation. This allowed it to make preliminary comparisons with its racing driver's performances at the previous British Grand Prix, justifying its belief that Ricardo was worth putting in its second team RB instead of Nick de Vries. That is another key distinction between Ricardo's scenario in 2023 and Lawson's situation now. Giving Ricardo a racing seat was plainly on Red Bull's plan and it was already getting closer to being a reality. Red Bull was merely searching for final confirmation since de Vries's destiny was all but certain. Lawson, however, must make a compelling argument for himself and for Red Bull to determine whether it truly wants to drop Perez at Red Bull or, ironically, Ricciardo at RB. 
And if it is true that Perez's 137-point gap to Verstappen is going to offer Red Bull the opportunity to activate a performance clause in his contract during the summer break, the Red Bull racing seat might be available as early as this season. Whatever Lawson accomplishes in the RB20, it will not be his final opportunity to impress before the end of the month. Perez has two races before the summer break to either improve his predicament or put his best foot forward. Lawson's Alpha Tauri 8003 test is slated for the week following the Belgian Grand Prix in Imola, so by the end of July, Red Bull will have all of the data from Perez, Lawson and Ricciardo to make a choice. And the timing is important since Lawson's contract is said to include a 2025 option on Red Bull's side that expires in September. If he does not have a racing seat for next year by then, he would be a free agent. The RB test, in the two-year-old car constructed under the team's former name, is essentially an opportunity for Lawson to gain good mileage in a year when his opportunities are restricted. It's been planned for a while and is most likely part of his typical 2024 calendar, which cannot include Friday FP1 appearances since his five racing starts last year exclude him from so-called young driver appearances. Despite being less relevant than driving the 2024 Red Bull, the 2022 car work will be more beneficial since the standards for testing earlier cars TPC guidelines, are more flexible. Though cars must only utilize components and software from a specified specification that have been used in at least one race or test, and are once again equipped with Pirelli's Academy tires, there are no mileage restrictions, and mechanical setup and driver control changes are allowed. This is why TPC regulations are so beneficial to teams training young drivers, with Ferrari, Oli Behrman, and Mercedes, Kimi Antonelli, protégés, receiving considerable mileage in conditions where teams can learn a lot about them. They can be so crucial that some teams choose old car tests above drivers' Formula 2 campaigns. Lawson has not driven an F1 car for either Red Bull team since his final Grand Prix in Qatar last year, so the two tests might just be a means for him to clear his mind. The next few weeks, rather than a single exam, will decide if they lead to anything more. However, for now, Red Bull is just seeing it as testing, as they don't want to show their cards. This resulted in Helmut Marco saying last weekend that Red Bull still believes Sergio Perez can pull himself together, amid widespread speculation of a driver swap with Daniel Ricciardo or Liam Lawson. As previously stated, Perez's contract has a clause that allows for such a relegation, which is supposed to be dependent on his driver's championship points. While Marco recognizes the significance of the Constructors' Championship, he also intimated that the team is not ready to throw in the towel on Perez. The fact is that the Constructors' Championship is very important for the team and all employees, he said, because the better we do there, the more bonus payments each individual employee will receive. That means that Sergio Perez has to deliver and is under pressure. But even if he is under pressure, Marco is not yet ready to wield the axe. We expect Sergio to pull himself together again. He has already managed to get out of a form of crisis several times in the past, he said. Any other driver would not look good against Max either. Max is in the form of his life and is still getting better. What do you think? Is putting Liam Lawson in the RB20 to test a way of seeing if he could replace Perez? Or is it to see if he could replace Ricciardo in 2025? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below.